And we're on to the final segment. Yeah, we made it. Thanks very much. I have been inspired and learned things through those presentations. I hope that everybody else has um, had similar moments of uh, inspiration, epiphany, or just commitment to actually, I'm going to now go and do uh, you know something to my app or improve uh, something that I saw or contribute to the projects that have been shared or the overall community. So as it has become traditional, I wanted to just spend a couple of minutes at the end of this presentation uh, day to talk about the project where it's going, um, the things that we're hoping to see soon and a little bit further down the road to set up a bit of a conversation as we go into the evening. There'll be a Q&A at the end, which probably starts a little bit with people who are joining us online can contribute and we'll try and get back to them. And as uh, a couple of minutes, uh, well, as we get towards a half hour mark, we'll shut off the, the live stream and the inter interaction there and we will head to the refreshment area to have some more in-depth conversations perhaps about very important technical issues. So the plan going forward is lar um, largely trying to continue with the uh, momentum, um, re regularly releasing public major um, feature advancements to the toolkit every four to six months. I mentioned to a couple of people here already that this flexes a little bit, but depending on people's availability, challenges that life and work throw at us. So it's not particularly set in stone, but it's good to have a routine so that people know what to expect and so that people who want to contribute to the project kind of know when the next big push might be or when they could expect a feature that they delivered to be released into public because there's nothing better than I made a thing and knowing that it's then in front of hundreds of thousands of people who might then um, benefit from the improvement that you made. Any, either way, we will continue with approximately monthly bug releases. Uh, these are making sure that anything that is, uh, you know, needing improvement is released to the community um, and uh, everybody using fine in their applications in a speedy-ish manner. If anything critical comes up, we will do a, a more rapid release, but monthly seems about right and we'll continue to do so. So if you're contributing bug fixes, as long as there's no API that's in involved in adding, then you should see that in um, public hands in the maximum of one month. So that's, you know, a little bit of how we're going to do it, but what is it that we're going to be doing next? So the 2.6 release, which is our next major um, release, is going to be uh, towards the end of this year. The exact date isn't set yet because we haven't finalized the feature set, but it is going to be improving uh, the concurrency for different applications. It was a topic of discussion earlier today in the contributor meetup, and hopefully some uh, aspiring contributors are going to help us solve these big uh, challenges so that not only can people get started building applications really fast without having to know anything about how this works under the hood, they can then run the go race condition checks over their application and find that there are no issues as opposed to finding that there might be some. So we're making more use of the excellence in the Go programming language to bring the same uh, rigor to the user interface. We have some cool new widgets, which I'm going to come back to as well. And I feel like with all of the talk about um, new platforms and the uh, distributions that people are wanting to use, we should work on this a little bit more as well. And lastly, if what's on your mind isn't in there, that's okay. We've still got plenty of room potentially to put it into that release, but also we are already talking about what goes into the release after. We name the releases alphabetically at early stage planning. So 2.6 was called F. It has a name, which I can't remember right now because we got closer to deliverables. The, the release after is the next letter and it doesn't have a name. So release G, it will probably be 2.7 because we're trying to avoid ever needing to go to a version three. We want to be backwards compatible all the time, but we hold back the possibility that one of these days we may actually have a really compelling reason to jump. So the version numbers aren't committed until much uh, closer to release time. Uh, so the enhanced concurrency that I mentioned earlier, I just wanted to go into a little detail so people can sort of expect uh, a little bit more or know, sorry, what to expect and how that works in their applications. This is going to deliver improved performance because internally we can do less complicated things to avoid potential issues. 
This, uh, like I said, means that you can eliminate the potential race conditions, so you can run Go's Race Checker and a whole load of other tools along your, against your application and know that it's always doing the right thing. And to make this possible, we're going to add, uh, I hope, background services, which has been requested a few times recently. Not only are they helping to manage the concurrency, it makes your code cleaner, which is great, we all like that, but also it means that we can have more of a kind of running in the background feel for mobile applications, which wasn't an issue until recently, but now there's really compelling apps being written in fine and distributed to all these platforms that not actually running in the background unless it's pushed or the user triggers it is a bit of a barrier to some in, in, uh, usages. So we're going to try and address that as well. And you'll probably see a new API called Run From Go Routine, which is going to help to manage connecting your background code, which is custom in some way, to the internal implementation. We're still working on the API there, so I wanted to share it in case people had feedback. Definitely open to discussions at this time. Let us know what you think. If you've got experience or uh, opinions in this area, do join the community, share, uh, comment on GitHub, all of those things. We want this to be as easy to understand as possible, but rich and um, safety focused. So looking at new widgets, of course, we're welcome. Uh, welcome all contributions of new widgets. If they can deliver value, meet the API design requirements, or the uh, cleanliness of the API that's been mentioned by a few speakers already, they would be absolutely welcome to join this list. There's just a couple that I thought was worth um, calling out here in case you were just holding back until it was ready. Hold no longer, or not much longer. Um, calendar, date entry, and time entry three things that are going to be essential to help get your application to understand or to receive input from your users regarding time. On discussion this morning, it seems like a time zone picker is actually going to be important as well to round out the functionality in that area. Calendar um, was contributed by a colleague of mine at Fine Labs called Derek, who put it into FineX. That's now been promoted up to Fine on the develop branch. That and date entry are already available. So if you like living on the, I'm not going to call it bleeding edge, but cutting edge, that functionality is available and time entry uh, will follow closely after. Another one that I want to see added is a number entry or some form of plus minus with a number in the middle because for a lot of the touch-based UIs, it's so much easier than switching into uh, an entry field to type a number when actually just like two or three up from where you were is the easier thing to do. I put spinner here in case people weren't familiar with it and then I realized when writing earlier slides that I called the activity indicator a spinner and it became obvious to me that the terminology is, not, is either ambiguous or collides across different platforms so we need a clean and unique um, API there to make it clear. Another area that we're working on is form validation. This is something that has got a, a few bugs that we're trying to resolve, but also the um, consistent approach to marking something as required is going to um, be an improvement so that you can have the user indicate it when something is required rather than just have it in a validator so they get um, pinged at the end of the form if they missed something. We want it to be much clearer. And I'm very hopeful that rich text entry exists in there as well. I would say that at least 20% of the chat over lunch was, but how difficult is a rich text entry and can we get it and will I be able to build that? Um, so it's cool, it's on everybody's tongue, it would seem, and yes, it is very difficult, but we're going to get that in because it enables a whole load of cool functionality. Uh, just also touching a little bit on signing and platform packaging. Currently, Windows executables, we don't have integration for signing, so we want to resolve that. And there is a note on some download sites that here's how you get your Mac OS app to work on an Apple Silicon device because it's going to tell you that it is corrupted by default because it would seem that Apple doesn't like developers sharing their work unless you pay them to approve it. Um, and actually, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we need to have better integration for that peer-to-peer -peer sharing. We do have certification when you're sending it up to the store, but we're going to add more support for the functionality needed to share it more safely or in a better approved way with your colleagues, friends, whatever. And following on from a lot of the chat about Linux, um, it'll be interesting to see what more distribution support we can get in there. Flatpak and those 
uh, types of systems are helping to get things um, in a kind of one-stop download way. But there's a lot of traditional, uh, traditional packaging systems out there that it would be good to have improved support for as well. And uh, iOS needs a few quality of life improvements. The, the simulator is having some challenges. We're aware of those. We're trying to make improvements. But at the same time, we're going to review how we can improve the um, first time developer experience for iOS to see if we can help get their things into the simulator without having to sign up to developer portals and get approval from, from Apple. So that's uh, another topic that we're looking to, to get improved. So those are things that are work in progress or semi-committed to the next release. Um, but there's a whole lot more that is either on the uh, plan, vague ideas of things that we want to see um, improve, just to get an idea of where, where our minds are at. Um, mobile scrolling speed is something that's come up before, but more interesting than momentum or the inertial scroll, something that makes the applications feel uh, more native again is uh, something that it would be uh, great to see in the next release, but definitely needs to, needs to come in the, the pretty high priority. Nobody's working on it right now, so if anyone's inspired who wants to help us get it into the 2.6 train, that would be amazing. Uh, accessibility is another big one. I think that probably stands on its own, but we want to help people get their applications in front of as many people having a good experience as possible. That should be the default. It is a lot of work, and so it's taking time. We're also working internally on the fine command line interface, the thing that helps with the packaging and adding some of the um, glossy exterior to a graphical user interface or the drag and drop app that we're used to. And we're trying to figure out how we can make cross compilation even easier than it already is. So if you do, if you have all of the tooling installed, it's going to work great. You can use fine cross if you prefer a containerized approach. But that's a switch that people have to understand the reason for there being two systems. So we're um, trying to figure out, can we make the fine system, the, the, the command line interface, do the right thing all the time and spin up what is necessary, given your current system, to make the result that you're asking for possible. So I had to get my head around that as well. Um, the nice thing is, it's a complex problem. We can solve it, and then nobody's going to have to worry about it again. And on the web side of things, mobile web actually requires a little bit more work. So the irony being that the web is ubiquitous and it's super easy to build for, apparently. We build native applications by default where everything just works. But our web driver didn't work out of the box because web is not the same on mobile and on desktop. And we've got a few things like how the software keyboard interacts um, to resolve. So web is excellent on, on desktop clients, but we need to make sure that across all platforms it's just as well served. Oh, so there's some things that's on our mind, what we're hoping to achieve, but um, why? I mean, <laughs> what's this all about? Where, where could this go if we had more time or more um, people involved in helping to make this happen? I'm super interested in where we can go if we're not only building apps with one platform for all platforms, but if we could actually make it possible for everyone everywhere to gain access to the same software, where the store itself is able to target all platforms, which technically it can. That window over there is an application that's running that will scan our apps.find.io repository and tell you about the software with a one-tap install that you can see succeeded for the, the Game Boy emulator there. This, I think, would help to improve discoverability. It's a, it's a way down there kind of a vision, but if you say to your friends, hey, are you on this latest chat platform, you don't have to worry about whether it's available for their system. You just say what it is, and that software is available. So this um, ubiquitous distribution means that it's as easy for the end user as it has been for us to make the software. And of course, if we have our way, it will mean that we can enhance the open source even further with free hosting, free discovery, and uh, basically, you know, share the love, make everything as good as it has been that we've learned uh, uh, along the way for, for developing on top of an open source platform. Uh, of course, a great place to start is the repository that I mentioned of all of the apps. I think that's, that's a solid underpinning. We're going to keep adding to it. Throw your apps in there. 
And you may find that it just um, you know, automatically becomes part of the first ubiquitous software so store that's, that's built on Fine as well. So that could be, that could be pretty fun. I think the one other thing that I really wanted to, to sort of share or, or ask today is to help us spread the word. Um, get your, the apps that you're building, the things that you're working on, get them out there, um, put them on the listing, uh, whether it's through sharing with your friends or putting it up on our store or um, whatever channel seems like the right thing for you. Let's see if we can bring them together so that more people see what's possible. Um, and yeah, I suppose that's really kind of like the, the the distribution point, uh, how can we get this into to more people's hands? But it, it's not just about code. It is about the documentation, the tutorials, the videos, having glamorous and uh, you know well-educated guest speakers come to events like this um, to help add to the rich content. We've found that some people prefer video learning, some people like to read, others like to examine the code. Uh, and documentation isn't everybody's first port of call, even if it's integrated with your IDE. So all of these areas, you know, we need to make sure that they have um, updates and the latest uh, uh, features, functionality uh, available. But more so just to share your knowledge and experience like we've been doing today, like the community does every day, and uh, like the conferences where anybody turns up and speaks help with as well. And be part of this amazing con uh, community. I think a few people have mentioned it already, but it's great to get together and see the, the difference that this project is making. Um, in case it was ambiguous as to how you might do that, we are on Slack and Discord and Matrix and I'm going to say Twitter because I'm an old guy, uh, and uh, Mastodon, probably elsewhere. Obviously, we're on YouTube Live today as well. Hi. Um, and a few other places. If you want to just sort of get stuck into the documentation that has been referenced, there's docs.find.io if you've never found it before. And there is a YouTube channel. <laughs> hey. There are um, lots of ways that you can get involved. Pretty much everything is in GitHub. The project itself, the, the, the source repository, is called Find inside the Find-IO organization, but everything else, the tutorials, the websites, it's all in there somewhere. Probably don't need to mention the apps listing once again. Um, it's there. Check it out. Put your stuff up on there. There is a submit button on the website if you haven't found it before. And lastly of all, we absolutely rely on our sponsors. We're very much appreciative to just Relate and Fine Labs and the other excellent fine sponsors who have been part of making today possible. If you want to help us out, there's, there's documentation, there's code, but there's also the chance that a little um, contribution to the funds helps to bring things together. Earlier, folk were asking about designers and other um, uh, people that could come along to make the project more well-rounded. All of those things would be amazing if we could somehow pull that together. So if you've got other random ideas, get in touch. That would be fantastic. Uh, I think that is everything. I've had a, a fantastic day, very much enjoyed myself. Thank you everybody for joining us and we'll see you next year somewhere in the United States.